In the last videos, we saw how you can use Zotero to manage references and also generate bibliographies. The other thing Zotero can do for you is help you generate footnotes. I will tell you up front that this will work for some of you and others will prefer to do it manually. And the reason is that when you give power to a software tool like Zotero, it does a lot of magic under the hood and it works great when it works. But when that magic doesn't work, it can be a little frustrating to troubleshoot. But in keeping with my philosophy in these videos, I will show you how it works. You can experiment with it and you can make your own decision. When I use Word to write or when I use Scrivener to write, I generally manage my own footnotes. But I do use this kind of integration deeply when I write in LaTeX. But that's beyond scope for most of you. So let's dive in. If you're like most students, as you write, you will type your footnotes manually. Kali Voss says this. I will go to references, insert footnote. I will look at my book or article. Kali Voss, 2008, the title, page 32, which is fine. Well, now, now I want to say this. Kali Voss also says that. Insert footnote, Cali Voss, 2008. But you know, actually, Cali Voss has two different articles he wrote in 2008. So gosh, now I have to start keeping track of which one was which. And now it really gets confusing. I'm going to have some other footnote uh, about some other author. I'll add a footnote for that. We'll say we're talking about Paul Staniland. And now we're going to go back to Calivas. Add a footnote. We're back to Calivas again, and I can't remember which article it was. Now, to make things worse, the norm for Air University with the Chicago 16th edition is if you're repeating an author, you're supposed to go back and put in Ibid. So now, as you get going, You've got your ibid in here. Well, what if you change the order? I'm going to add a couple sentences because my advisor has feedback. Well, then I have to go back and change the ibids back. And you can very quickly get lost in citation hell here, trying to keep track of sources. So let's get rid of all that. And you'll notice that if we've installed Zotero, we also get a Word Zotero plugin installed that will let us do Zotero citations. So we can do this. Kalivas says this add edit citation and it will ask us to search for the reference we want. We're going to use Calivas 2008 Ethnic Defection and Civil War. I'll put a page number, enter. I've got my footnote and now look I've got a full citation down here in Chicago manual format. I can go to document preferences to see which format we're using. 17th edition with IBID. I can go ahead and do the other thing. Calivas says that. Add citation. We'll search for Calivas. Here's his other 2008 article, Promises and Pitfalls of an Emerging Research Program, page 70. We've got both articles there. Now as we go, we just continue to add our footnotes this way. If we need to change something, uh, we can go to Add Edit Citation here and it will allow us to change the Zotero link. And essentially what's happening is these footnotes are linked to Zotero items. Uh, I just noticed the microdynamics of Civil War. I have a typo here. I have a capital M-I. So let's fix that. Um, all right. Let's do that. And now if we go re refresh citations, it fixed it. So this is another benefit of linked citations is we can go back and clean things up and it will all uh, continue to work for us. Um, now let's add a couple references to Paul Staniland, his book. I want to show you one other thing. I'm going to reference Staniland, Networks of Rebellion. And we'll do the same thing on another page. Paul Staniland, Networks of Rebellion. Now what you'll see is Zotero was smart enough to put in the IBID where it belongs. 
And if we were to change these references, uh, the ordering, it will smartly figure out what needs to change. We'll refresh. And it's no longer IBID because by the time we reach Daniland here, we, we're not referencing the citation above it anymore. We've moved on to Calivas and now back to Standalone, so we need the full citation. So you can see how if you're working on a big document with lots of references, the intelligence that Zotero brings can really help you out. Now, sometimes things do get a little bit frustrating. Um, one thing I noticed, for example, is we'll do an article, another Calivas reference. Calivas 2008, Ethnic Defection in Civil War. Refresh. Okay, it didn't go IBID this time. What it did is it went from a full long citation of his paper, reference in footnote one, to a short version of his paper in footnote two. And if we do a third reference to that same article, now we've got the IBID. And I haven't dug into the Chicago manual to look closely at this. Maybe this is the norm. First reference is a long reference, second reference is short, and then only then we go to IBID. Whatever, that behavior caught me off guard a little bit. But by and large, this works pretty well. I mean, you're down at that level of detail. Uh, you're probably fine. Uh, I mean, the key thing with citations is that you can help other scholars cleanly and, and easily identify your sources and go find them, which this does quite well. Every once in a while, I had some kind of issue where I, I broke a citation. Uh, I'm not really sure how to reproduce it, but I got an error message from Zotero saying, hey, your document's broken. Now, the other piece of this, if you're using integrated footnotes, is when it comes time to do our bibliography, we don't need to copy and paste our bibliography out of Zotero. We can just hit Add Edit Bibliography. And there it is. The two references we've cited are brought in automatically. Now, one nice thing about this, as opposed to generating one from within Zotero, if we generated a list from Zotero, we would have to manually keep track of which references we use in the thesis or not. If we had various references in that Zotero collection that weren't used in the paper, let's say we you know, thought we were gonna use one and then ended up not, it would still be included in the bibliography. If you're using smart footnotes like this, your bibliography will only reflect what you actually cite in the paper. So there's a number of benefits to this uh, if you're willing to put up with some of the, the behind the scenes magic. Uh, so play with it, maybe try it for like one course paper and see what you think. And if you don't like it, you can always do it manually. Um, I'm gonna show you one other thing. We're in the weeds a little bit. I mentioned Air University use, uses the 16th edition of Chicago style, which has this IBID thing. One of the changes to the 17th edition is IBID went away. Now you're still supposed to reference the author's name. And the way we can see that is if we go to uh, document preferences, we could change this to the regular 17th edition full note and refresh and our IBID just went away and was replaced by Calivas. So if you really wanna match the AU style guide, which you probably should, we need to still use that IBID. And if we get online, If we get online, Zotero has a style repository, zotero.org slash styles. We can go there, go to Chicago Manual of Style. We can either load the 16th edition or we can take 17th edition full note with IBID. That's what I use. So I'm gonna click that and download it and if you're ever writing at another university, another program with a different style guide, you can find what you need here. Now when it's time to work on my document, Zotero Preferences, all my available citation styles are here. I can go to Manage Styles, and the style list will come up here. I can, I'll go ahead and delete this. The, the full note with IBID for 17th edition does not come with Zotero. I had to manually install that. All right, so this is what you will see, but now you can hit that plus sign, go into your downloads and add our citation. 
and boom, there you go. Full note with IBID. Close that. Go back to our paper. Document preferences, we'll choose full note with IBID. Hit OK. Go back to our paper and refresh. And there we are, we got IBID again. So that should give you everything you need to get started. Give it a try, see what you think.